If you were trapped in the house, hunted down by a blind special forces killer, and you can't make a sound, what would you do? The characters in this movie thought robbing a blind man would be an easy job, only for it to turn into a brutal trap that takes a shocking turn towards the end. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and explain how to beat the blind soldier in Don't Breathe. Rocky is a small time burglar who's trying to make as much money as she can to leave Detroit and head to California with her sister. She finds out from her partner there's a house in Skid Row where a veteran lives alone, and a whole lot of cash is sitting around inside. She doesn't have a clue that this will be the last robbery of her life. The burglars scout out the veteran's neighborhood and spot him outside walking his dog, and they notice he has a cane. This man is blind as a bat, and the job appears to have gotten a whole lot easier. But if they took it more seriously, they would have seen a few red flags. They noticed the cane, but not that he was extremely fit for his age. That means he's exercising and active. This guy is a war veteran with a killer instinct and a body to match. He probably even sleeps with a gun, and his Rottweiler already has it in for you. So maybe not as easy as they all think. Later that night, the team begins their robbery. They slip the guard dog some sedatives, but find that the front door has several locks they can't open. Wait, this doesn't make sense. They have the key for the man's home security company. Why would he have extra locks? So far, they've been smart about this. Thorough research, 24-hour recording of neighborhood activity, but this is a bad start. Four locks is a sign that he's not going to make things easy for you, especially since he's a military man. I would bring brass knuckles or other self-defense weapons so that we have a better chance in a confrontation. Nothing they try works. The side door to the house is locked shut, and so is the cellar door but Rocky spots a window above them and clambers up the side. She breaks in through the bathroom window and sneaks as fast as she can to shut off the burglar alarm before it goes off. This girl knows what she's doing. The problem is he's blind, not deaf. Cracking glass with a rock is noisy and stomping around in boots is going to wake him up. The blind develop enhanced hearing and the ability to track movement. Also, the statistical majority of US soldiers experience terrible insomnia and he just lost his daughter he would definitely be a light sleeper. Considering who they're up against, being silent here could save you. For this, they could have used duct tape. It pads the sound, it keeps most of the glass shards intact, and while taking your shoes off is smart, it's another loose end. With everyone inside, they begin searching the house for the cash. One of the guys enters the veteran's bedroom where he's about to fill it with sleeping gas, but the soldier suddenly gets up. It's time to acknowledge that this man is crazy alert. Just puncturing a plastic bottle wakes him up. If that doesn't change your strategy, then you might as well write your will and testament. But it's a lot of money, and if you've gone this far, I wouldn't call it quits just yet. What you should do now is lock him in. This can be done by tying the knob to a heavy piece of furniture, or using a specialized security bar to force it shut. None of them have found any money, but they do find this door with some crazy locks on it. They try forcing it to open with a pry bar, and when that doesn't work, one of the burglars pulls out a gun and shoots the lock off. Alex here begins to realize this can only end badly for them. So far, they broke into his house, damaged his property, and brought a gun into the home of a veteran with superior skill and knowledge in firearms. The castle law dictates this guy can defend his home, and if you think shooting into a plastic bottle is going to keep it quiet, you're dead wrong. The best homemade silencer would be a modified oil filter. It might be bulky, but it's gonna do the job. Alex decides enough is enough and leaves, and he's the only one thinking straight because things are about to go terribly wrong as a blind man suddenly appears behind them, and they're definitely underestimating how much this Gulf War vet can do. The burglar tells him he just stumbled and drunk, but the vet steps on the broken bolt lock and knows exactly what it is. He threatens him with his gun, shooting a warning shot, which alerts Alex outside. He moves in, grabs the gun, and disarms him. It's officially time to freak out. They're completely outmatched. He slammed the gun to his neck, asking one simple question, who else is with you? In this moment, we need to take stock of some important facts. You won't overpower him, you can't sneak up on him, you can't find the money, and there's no way to save your friend. If you're the first to bolt, you might get away. Heartless, I know, but that's the life of a criminal. He will definitely shoot if he hears you running, so I'd throw something as a diversion, stay low to the ground, and sprint for the door. If I'm still alive, I can make new friends and never mention this to anyone. Instead, they all panic in solidarity. The burglar tells him that he came alone and gets promptly shot. Horrified, Rocky hides herself in a closet as Alex comes back in and finds the blind guy is locking things down, literally locking the door shut and boarding up the broken window. This is terrifying, but he has a shot here. The gun is near the sink within arm's reach, 
I would grab it and shoot him dead, wipe the prints, and place it in the hands of my dead friend. That's at least what I'd like to do, but I'm way too much of a coward for that. Let's just close our eyes and hope this all goes away. From the closet, Rocky sees the veteran open a safe and input the pin code, a simple four-digit combo that's going to pay off big. Alex finds her, and together, they discover that inside the safe are bundles of cash. Now they got what they came for, but how are they going to leave? Remembering that there is a storm cellar outside, they head for the door, only to find the veteran blocking their only escape plan. He begins to drag the dead body out, but as they slowly back away, he hears the floorboard creak. Wood floors are impossible to beat. It's too late for WD-40. Your only option is to cover your mouth and stay breathless and motionless until he leaves the room. That's what I would do, but the truth is, it might get me killed just as quickly. When your heart is racing, it's using up your body's oxygen reserves, making it very difficult to hold your breath for long. The right strategy is to breathe through your mouth slowly as it's less noisy because it's a wider air passage. The burglar's phone goes off and he shoots at it. It's a distraction that saves their life. But if I'm seeing this, I'm losing all hope. His aim was incredible for a blind man. It definitely makes running for an exit a bad strategy. He continues carrying the body out of the room, giving them the chance to find a way out. But they're about to find a horrifying surprise awaiting them in the basement. They can barely see anything. They're stumbling around with no exit in sight when out of nowhere, a woman leaps at them. She's gagged, tied up, and chained to a wall. This just got way more intense. Killing an armed burglar is one thing, but this is insane. They now understand who they're dealing with, a psycho killer who plays by his own rules. And upstairs, he just figured out that these guys are still in the house. I told you those shoes were a bad idea. Rocky goes to rescue her and realizes that she's the girl who killed the blind man's daughter. This is his revenge. She directs them to a safe and lucky for them, he used the same combo. Inside they find keys and use them to free her, not realizing that this kind of act was their biggest mistake of the night. Now it's good to help people, but right now it's not smart. Escape gets a lot harder with three people, let alone two. And it's strange they never think to take off her gag. She might have told us about the bell she's rigged with, and from there an ambush could be planned by luring him down with it. As long as we stay silent, we have a chance to knock him out and lock him in. But let's not kid ourselves. This is a gamble, because if you have to fight him, you've already lost. The cellar door gets unlocked and the man starts firing, grazing Alex, shooting at Rocky as she breaks her phone, and accidentally killing the girl they were trying to rescue. Taking cover, they retreat into the basement. The man cautiously steps down and slips in blood, realizing the woman is dead, and begins crying. This is not what you'd expect if she killed his daughter. There might be more to this than it seems. They watch from the shadows as the blind man locks the door and breaks the key in the hole, guaranteeing no escape. The burglar's only plan left is to make a break for the other room and get to the front door, but suddenly, all the lights in the basement go off. It's pitch black, and they have to reach out to find their way around, while the veteran is literally sprinting through the dark corridors. It's the perfect death trap for a blind man. He starts firing at them, and taking cover, the two split up as they try to navigate the basement. Rocky moves along a shelf and has no idea that she's about to bump into the veteran. She's practically breathing on him and is only saved by Alex's calls, luring the blind man towards him. The veteran somehow finds Alex and grabs him, shoving a gun against his head. But realizing the gun is empty, he starts strangling him. Luckily, he's able to knock a shelf onto the veteran before running away to get the girl. We've lost her single advantage over him, sight. How do we escape? You can start by confirming where he is. Draw him in with a noise and hide on a lower shelf to hear him walk by, effectively mapping part of the room for you to run in the opposite direction. He has the whole place memorized, but he will follow what he hears. Once he's distracted, make your way towards the light quickly. They scramble to get out of the basement and jam the door shut, but find themselves staring down a massive Rottweiler. Rocky goes to unlock the front door while Alex tries his best to keep the dog calm. He nearly succeeds, until the veteran tries to break down the basement door, sending the dog into attack mode and forcing them upstairs. They barricade themselves in one of the bedrooms and try to escape through the windows, but they're barred. It's a bad situation that only gets worse as the veteran starts breaking through the door. Alex suggests pressing the panic button on his remote, making the point that the cops will overlook their robbery when they discover that this man is a murdering psychopath. And he's right, this lets them live, but not keep the cash, something Rocky isn't willing to do. The vet is still pushing through and they're running out of time, but they suddenly spot an air vent above that's big enough for one of them to slip through. Rocky squeezes into the crawl space just as the dog rams Alex, knocking him out of the window and on the skylight below. As if that wasn't enough, the psycho dog then climbs its way into the shaft and makes its way towards Rocky to finish the job. With no other option, she throws herself down the shaft head first, slamming into the ground. 
Alex is dangerously suspended on the skylight. He tries rolling slowly as the glass cracks under him, but looks up only to see the blind man shoot the glass, holding him up, sending him falling to the ground. Hurt from the fall, he walks through the house, trying to use his remote to activate the burglar alarm. Now it's risky, but we now have an open path outside. I might have tried going back up through the skylight. We'd be wearing gloves so we wouldn't get cut too badly. And judging by their height, it's possible to jump up to, but it's too late because the blind man finds him first and fires his revolver, forcing him to hide in this laundry room right next to his friend's corpse. The veteran tracks him to the room but gets ambushed and disarmed, but he should have gone straight for his head because he grabs Alex who quickly gets overpowered and beats the snot out of him. But the washing machines turn on, disorientating the man. Alex takes his chance and reaches for the gun on the floor. Now, if I was in this situation with my honed abilities as a coward, I would have run out of the door, but kicked the gun out with me. Get out of the close space because it forces you to fight him and you won't win that. The veteran manages to turn off the washing machines and stop Alex from grabbing the gun, throwing punch after punch before finishing the burglar off with garden shears. Recovering from her fall, Rocky struggles to reach the end of the ventilation shaft that leads straight out of the house. She's able to turn herself around and kick out the grate, but it's too late. She's ripped out of the crawl space by the veteran and gets knocked out. She wakes up, locked into the same harness as the woman before her. The veteran very clearly tells her he won't let her go after what she's done and intends to keep her as a replacement. For what exactly? A baby maker. He was using the woman to make a new daughter for him to replace the one she had killed. Rocky is gonna stay with him for the next nine months. It's almost impossible to escape from this unless you're prepared in advance. Handcuffs have a universal one-fits-all lock. If you're a criminal, they'll likely come in handy. You can tuck it in your waistband to access when you're cuffed. It's looking hopeless for her. The blind man has won and there's nothing she can do. But upstairs, Alex gets up from the floor. He's still alive because the other burglar's body was stabbed instead of his. Now he has his best chance to escape. With some quick thinking, he's able to trick and lock the dog inside the laundry room, giving him time to unlock and open the front door. He needs to leave. It's not about money anymore. This is pure survival. If both of you are caught, it won't help anyone. He's had the drop on you at every turn and without even being able to see. Get out and get help. Back in the basement, the veteran disposes of the girl's corpse and hoists up Rocky to prepare her for what's to come. Now he's not going to force himself on her. Oh no, it's way worse. He grabs his bottle of frozen goo from a fridge, gets it nice and warm and fills a turkey baster with it. It's an absolutely horrifying moment for Rocky, who tries to rip her way out of the harness, but there's no escape. This is going to happen. Just as she's given up all hope, blood splatters on her face, and the blind man gets knocked away by Alex. He came back to set her free, taking the cuffs off and placing them on him. She swears that she'll get the veteran arrested, but Alex points out that it would end badly. They've broken into his house, stolen his money, and assaulted him. It would be child's play for the guy to turn the cops against them. They have to let him go if they want to get away. It appears to be over, but just as they make it back upstairs and open the front door, Alex gets killed by the blind man, leaving Rocky the sole survivor who makes it out of the house. It seems like she's safe, but then his dog comes bolting out of the house. You can't outrun a Rottweiler. It's not going to happen. If you're being chased by a dog, standing still and slowly walking away will usually work in this situation. But this dog might be related to Cujo, so I can't blame her for running. But she might have had a better chance to run around the back of the house where there's more cover and more obstacles to put as much between yourself and its crazy canine as you can. It chases her all the way back to her car and snags a hold of the money bag, leaving her stuck inside. And to make matters worse, she dropped the money outside the car. The keys are nowhere to be found. She's trapped. But she comes up with an ingenious plan that would have made MacGyver proud. She opens up the trunk to lure the dog inside and then yanks on the rope she attached to trap him in, while at the same time pushing the passenger seats back into place effectively caging the dog, at least for a moment, before it rips its way out. Man, this dog has no chill. It gets so close that it's almost able to bite her, and this gives her the chance to hook the release latch onto the dog's collar, pulling it back and giving her the space to get out and grab the bag. Now, if only she was a bit more careful, she would have gotten away. Dragged back to the house and dropped right next to Alex's corpse, it's utterly hopeless. But maybe she's got one last trick up her sleeve. She grabs Alex's remote and activates the panic button, Alarms start blaring throughout the house and overwhelm the veteran. Rocky picks up a pry bar and blitzes the blind man, hitting him as she cleverly takes advantage of his confusion. But just as she's about to land one more blow, the alarm shuts off. The veteran hears the floorboard creak behind him and he turns, but he's too slow on the draw and gets sent flying, knocked into the basement floor where his gun goes off, shooting a leaky hole into himself during the fall. 
She takes a breath as if for the first time all night. With the money in hand and the veteran dead, Rocky leaves the house just in time before the police arrive. Later, as she and her sister are waiting at a train station, she sees a news report about the robbery. There's no mention of her or any money being stolen, but the veteran is still alive, covering in the hospital. He hasn't told anyone about what really happened, but who knows what he'll do once he's finally out. But what do you think? How would you beat the blind soldier? Let me know with a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe. And until next time, have a damn good day.